Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. This is magic. Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. Science is the study of how the natural world works. This is science. <coughs> Ecosystems are epic. Ecosystems. An ecosystem is a community made up of living organisms, combined with non-living things such as air, water, soil. All of these are interacting with each other and with their non-living environmental elements like weather, earth, sun, soil, climate, atmosphere. An ecosystem is the set of living things in a particular place, plus the place itself. It's the place and all of the connections in that place. In an ecosystem, each specific organism has its own role to play. <laughs> Not that kind of role. Organisms are each playing a part in the environment. <laughs> yep, eco means relating to the environment. Its Greek root word is actually oikos, which means home. Eco means home. Environment, home. Home environment. A system is a group of individual things that, when found together, form something whole or complete. An ecosystem is quite complex. You can think of its complexity kind of like a high performance car's engine. A souped up car engine is a system. It has lots of parts. To work properly, they must all work together. If one of them isn't working well, the system, the car, doesn't work as well either. Ecosystems kind of work the same way. If one part isn't doing well, the whole system can suffer or it doesn't work at all. And that's not good. An ecosystem isn't a car, however. It's much, 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 much more complex. An ecosystem is a community of living organisms that are interacting with each other and 
the environment. It's not just the place, it's also the interactions between everything in that place. An ecosystem has two principal components, living and non-living. Living things are called biotic factors. There are three different kinds of biotic factors. Producers, consumers, decomposers. Producers are organisms that create their own food. Plants, using the energy from the sun, produce their own food. They are biotic. Consumers are organisms that do not produce their own food. They get their energy from eating other organisms. They are biotic. Decomposers are organisms that eat and get their energy from things that were once alive. Examples might include soil bacterium, fungus, or earthworms. All three are central to ecosystems. It's weird, but even a potted plant has millions of living organisms in it. It is a tiny ecosystem. Did you get that? Yeah, even a potted plant has millions of living organisms in it. Uh. Most of them are microscopic. They include bacteria and plankton. An ecosystem also has non-living things. These are called abiotic factors. Abiotic factors include things like sunlight, temperature, the atmosphere, and wind, rocks, minerals in the soil, and even water. An ecosystem is made up of both abiotic and biotic factors. The ecosystem is not just the place, it's also the connections in that place. Ecosystems can be as large as a continent, such as Antarctica, or as small as a puddle of water. An ecosystem is a biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. A healthy ecosystem is kept that way by, by a kind of balancing act. It's constantly adjusting itself to seek balance. Ecosystems are a part of nature and nature's equilibrium, but they are more complex than a simple teeter-totter. They are more complicated than this guy's balancing on the steel tube. That's how nature rolls. She's complicated, but always seeking equilibrium. Here are a couple of key ideas to keep in mind. Each individual kind of organism is a member of a species. All the members of a species are called a population. All of the species grouped together in an ecosystem are called a community. A community might have hundreds of different populations in it. A community in a small ecosystem, like a puddle, it might only have 10 populations. Let's take a look at a simplified ecosystem with only a few abiotic and biotic factors. The biotic factors are grass that creates seeds, mice that eat the grass seeds, hawks that eat the mice. The abiotic factors are sunlight and water. Again, this is a simplified, actually super simplified ecosystem. When the ecosystem is in balance, there's enough sunlight and rainwater to keep the grass growing well. There are enough seeds to keep the mice fed, and there are enough mice to feed the hawks. Just like when there are two people on a teeter-totter, it doesn't take much to mess up the balance. Sometimes, that could be a big problem. Imagine if this ecosystem experienced a drought. All of the grass would die, and there wouldn't be any seeds. Because they didn't have seeds to eat, the mice would die, or move away to look for food elsewhere. The hawks wouldn't have food since the mice are gone, so they'd also die, or have to move away. Just one abiotic factor, water, caused this entire ecosystem to crash. Even small things can cause an ecosystem to have problems. Imagine if half of the hawks flew away for some reason. The mice population would grow and grow and grow since they weren't being eaten as fast. The larger population of mice would eat more food until it ran out. Then the mice would suffer from a lack of food and begin to die or move away. In real life, ecosystems are even more complex than our simple example. Ecosystems oftentimes have hundreds or thousands of different factors, both biotic and abiotic, that affect them. The principle of balance or equilibrium still applies though. Affecting one population or abiotic factor can have either a small or a large impact on the entire ecosystem. Because ecosystems are very, very complex, it's sometimes difficult to figure out what might be causing the negative effects you observe. A stream that gets blocked might cause eagles to move away because they've lost the fish. Fish 
are their primary food source. A disease that kills foxes might cause the rabbit population to grow. The large number of rabbits wipe out the plants that are eaten for food. Here's one final aspect of ecosystems that I'd like to share with you. Ecosystems have what are called limiting factors. A limiting factor is anything that limits or stops the further growth and the sustainability of an ecosystem. If the presence or the absence of a factor limits the growth of an ecosystem's elements, it is called a limiting factor. There are several abiotic factors that limit ecosystems' growth. They include temperature, precipitation, sunlight, soil configuration, and soil nutrients. Limiting factors can also be biotic, such as the increase of a predator population. Limiting factors, though, are oftentimes abiotic. Temperature is a common limiting factor. Bananas don't grow well in North America because it's too cold. Not because of the soil or the rainfall. Snowy owls don't venture too far south because they prefer cooler climates. Water is a huge limiting factor. The deserts in the southwestern United States get the same amount of sunlight as the forests of the southeastern United States. They are deserts, though, because they don't get the rainfall from the water that's evaporated from the Gulf of Mexico. That's interesting, isn't it? That one limiting factor, rainfall, makes a huge difference. In all the world, there's only one limiting factor that has the power to cause widespread harm to every ecosystem. Can you guess what it is? Humans. Yeah, people. Now, people are not bad. In fact, people are pretty cool. But we are such a successful species, there's so many of us, somewhere around seven billion, our access to powerful machines, technology, and industry means that we can affect the planet's ecosystems in dramatic ways. To be responsible citizens of the planet means that we must always be cautious of what we're doing that affects the planet's ecosystems. The planet's ecosystems are just amazing. The planet's ecosystems allow us to live. So it's really smart on our part to be responsible and make sure we're doing no harm to them. An ecosystem is a set of living things in a particular place, plus that place itself. Woo, look at you, look at her go.